I want to tell you a story of a man who played a significant role in Korean history. The story of a Dr. William Schofield. He was Canadian citizen, but he was born in 1889, Rugby, England. He moved to Canada in 1901. After graduation, he moved to Korea as a missionary and educator. 1910. Japan's imperial power annexes Korea, forcibly removing its sovereignty. Korea becomes a colony of Japan. In 1916, Frank Schofield comes to Korea to work as a missionary and as a professor of veterinary medicine at the Severance Medical School. Within Korea, the situation is tense. Rumors circulate that King Gojong was poisoned to death on the direct orders of the Japanese. Subsequently, 33 Korean leaders secretly gather to plan a mass movement for independence. One day, Lee Gapsung, a colleague at the Severance Medical School, asks for Schofield's help in connecting the independence movement within Korea to the outside world. On March 1, 1919, at 2 p.m., the 33 representatives of the people proclaimed the independence of Korea. But those who gathered to shout out the cry of freedom were confronted with guns and swords wielded by the Japanese. With his camera and his pen, Schofield records the heartbreak of ordinary people standing up to the violent oppression of the Imperial Army. The March 1st independence movement results in more than 7,500 deaths and a further 16,000 injured at the hands of the Japanese. As each missionary leaves Korea to return home, Schofield passes along the photographic and written records of these events. His pictures shock the world. In an attempt to suppress the rising Korean people, the Imperial Army resorts to drastic measures. In one village, Japanese soldiers brutally slaughter 30 people and set the entire village on fire. It was Schofield's eyewitness accounts of these events and his efforts to get them to the outside world which prevented such savage acts from being forgotten and buried in obscurity. Frank Schofield fought for Korea's independence in spite of his physical handicaps from polio, leaning on a donkey for support or riding a bicycle to hide from the Imperial Police. As a result of threats of assassination by the Japanese, he was forced to return to Canada. <laughs> 